praise the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everybody that's here in the name of Jesus. We're going to get into today's lesson. It's always a blessing to be able to keep the Lord's Sabbath day, which keeps us rooted in serving him. Because I've seen a lot of people come and start trying to serve the Lord, and then they fall by the wayside, as the Bible tells you. So it's a blessing when you're still hanging in there. And we know it's only a short time to go before everything is over with. So if you're doing what you need to do now, all you got to do is hang in there and continue to do it. Because it's not going to be that much longer. We know that according to Bible prophecy. And we, we, we've out, we're out preaching everywhere we can, everywhere that the Lord allow us, because we know that it's a short time and people's lives are at stake. Even their eternal life is at stake. It's just like Paul said in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. We can't read that. We can't read every scripture that we mention here, but you can always go read it on your own. He said in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, that he was out preaching around verse 9 or 10 or 11. He was preaching. He said, we persuade men. But the reason why he said we persuade men, because he said, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Now, who ever heard of such a thing in our modern churches? Nobody tell you about the terror of the Lord. We heard of everything else but Nothing close to the terror of the Lord. We heard of the love of the Lord, which is good. We need to know about the love of the Lord. We didn't heard about that. We heard of the kindness of the Lord, the mercy of the Lord. But they act like the other side of the Lord is not in the Bible. So a whole lot of people are fooled. And a whole lot of people are going to be in trouble. They don't know how serious this is. Even people that go to church. Every week don't know how serious this is. But Paul knew how serious it was. The people in the Bible who believed in God correctly knew how serious it was. That's why he said that in 2 Corinthians 5. A lot of people, and they read that chapter because they go there to try to say, you know, we're going to be present with the Lord. Why don't they just read down a few more verses to find out about the terror of the Lord? That's, that's something that we... Definitely need to know because that's, that means you're going to either make it or you're going to be in some big trouble with the Lord. That's what he said. Knowing therefore, the, we, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. That's what we understand. That's why we are trying to preach to people so they can find out and get their act together before it's too late. Because again, the Lord is not playing. You, you're not playing if he had to warn you about the terror of the Lord. Not playing. The Lord is straight serious about whether or not you do what he wants you to do, believe the right way so you can get into his kingdom. Or else he got something else for you that you don't want to even imagine. But people don't know this about the Lord. They don't know how dangerous the Lord is because people have watered down God. They have sugar-coated God like you know, God is not going to do nothing. God love everybody. I don't know how people can believe that with this whole Bible here. Just like the first verse we're going to read in this scripture, everybody heard of this verse. But it ain't like we got one big Bible with one verse in it. We got a whole lot of verses in this Bible that we need to read to understand God. We can't just take one verse like they put this verse at football games all over the place. You know what I'm talking about already. John 3.16. Everybody didn't heard of that. But even if you just read a little more around that, you would get some important insight about the Lord. Just read a little further, which we're going to do. You would get some important insight, but they don't never do that. They, they like to take something that sounds beautiful and pretty. That's what I mean. They just water it down. Nothing wrong with that verse. But you got to put it in context with the rest of the Bible. So, yeah, John 3.16 mean what it say. 
But that don't mean that you don't have no responsibility. Yeah, God did love the world and gave his only begotten son. But now, what about the flip side of that? What about the people who don't do what God is telling them to do? God got something for them. But nobody ever talks about that. Because again, the word of God and God has been watered down, been sugarcoated so much, you don't even have a clue about God. That's why they never read, will read that. That would mess the whole church service up if they read something about the terror of the Lord. People be talking, what did he say? What? Huh? The organ man has stopped playing. You know, they like to be in unison with the preacher. <laughs> and they be, they be playing with him. That'll mess him up. He won't know what to play behind that. The terror of the Lord. But it's all over the Bible. That's just one I just threw out, just quoted. We got a whole lot. Just like I said, people want to use one verse and make a whole teaching out of it. We got a whole lot of verses. In the Bible, the Bible probably got at least 30,000 verses. So how are you going to take one and, and think you know something? And the Lord got it here for us to get some understanding of it. But that's why the preachers, they can't read too much. That's why the average preacher read one. I give them two or as an average. Some of them might read three or four. They're getting kind of crafty now. So they're stepping up their game a little bit. So they might read three or four. But on the average, they, as a whole, all the preachers put together, they averaging no more than two verses a Sunday. No more than two. But we see on this, I can, I can at least, my best guess, I can say we average at least a hundred verses a week. So we can come close to getting some understanding about God. You add up a hundred verses a week time uh, for 52 weeks, just one year. You'd have read what? At least over 5,000 verses, right? Now you add up day two. I mean, you, you might make it to a hundred, right? Cause some of them not even read two. Some of them bold enough just to say, I'm just gonna read half of that verse. That's my text for the day. And they talk, 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 talk. But they don't inform nobody about the Lord. So we're gonna deal with something that's of utmost importance. That's showing how God is not playing around. How serious God is. They just sugarcoated. Made you think grace just saved you. Made you think the spirit don't make you have to do nothing. We're going to look at something in the Bible showing how serious God is. So the title is Receive the Truth or a Reprobate Mind to be damned. See, nobody want to talk about anything harsh like that. But if you're going to get some understanding of the Bible, you need to know that. You need to receive this. See, God is not playing. That's why we out preaching the word. See, I know we trying to reach people with the word. But I also know the other side that God, even if they don't hear, like he told Ezekiel in the third chapter and somewhere else in Ezekiel, he said, Ezekiel, I'm sending you to some crazy stiff necked people. He said, that's OK. He said, they're going to be looking at you hard. But I want you to preach to them anyway. Why do God want you to preach to somebody that he practically know they ain't going to listen to you? Because God intends to damn them. That's what people don't understand. God want to make sure that they have had an opportunity to hear the word where they can't say nothing. I mean, God wants you to be saved if you will listen. But he knows certain people just not going to listen. And the majority of people not going to listen. So that's why I understand, even though we're trying to reach people, we want them to hear the word. I understand the flip side that a lot of people are not going to listen and it's going to be to their detriment what we're doing by preaching the word to them. That's why he said in Matthew 24, he said the gospel going to be preached to the whole world for a witness to all nations. A witness means, look, that, that's somebody, even in court, they use a witness against you, right? That's what God said. It's going to be a witness because nobody is going to be able to say, Lord, I've never heard nothing like that. Now, the Lord going to be able to show them. Look, I had these people. You thought they was crazy on TV and everywhere because we catch people everywhere. Well, we can catch them at. We have preached to them if they act like they want to listen. So they ain't going to be able to escape. So that's the title. Receive the truth 
or a reprobate mind to be damned. See, a reprobate mind is, in other words, God will only let you, he will give you so much time. And if you keep rejecting what he wants you to be about, to listen, God will mess you up. That's what I'm saying. People don't know how dangerous God is. He will mess your mind up. Now you will be doing wrong so much you can't even stop from doing wrong. That's how dangerous God is. And that's important for us to know here because we can know the truth and still go the other way. God is not playing. A reprobate mind is a mind that just cannot do right. Just don't have no restraint whatsoever. Even when you didn't knew better. Then you just can't help yourself. That's because you didn't got too far. See, people think God is always going to have mercy on you. I was talking to a sister one. She said, oh, no, God said he'll forgive every sin. She said, so that make her think in her mind, she can just pretty much do what she want to. Because God is that loving. He's that merciful. He's going to forgive every sin. So I even flipped over. We're not going to read none of that today. I flipped over and read what Jesus said. It's some sin that's unforgivable. I said, what about this, sister? Oh, well, she couldn't answer that. So obviously, that lets you know right there he's not going to forgive every sin. In John, right before Revelation, one of the letters of John, he said, look, there is a sin unto death. Don't even pray for somebody that do that. And that's what we boarding on today when you done messed up so far that you done got a messed up mind, a reprobate mind. So we're going to take a look at because I've seen people deal with the word for a little bit, know the whole truth, then they go out back door. Then they start talking real crazy. Stuff they, stuff they used to disagree with, they start agreeing with it now. Something's wrong with that. Even if I make a mistake, I just like to stick to it that way. I just made a mistake. Don't try to make it like it's right. But now, for uh, John the third chapter, we're going to pick it up at verse 16. John 3 and verse 16. This is the famous verse. This is the famous one here that people like to read. So again, I'm going to mention the title, Receive the Truth or a Reprobate, reprobate Mind to be Damned. And I could add a whole lot more to that title, but they won't even be able to fit it on the DVD, so I just limit it. Like I'm going to have a subtitle, I can say, the word for the day, y'all can write this down. Preachers like to give you little stupid words that don't mean nothing. You can write this down. The word for the day is if. Keep that in, in, in the back of your mind. That's the word for the day. If. That's a real big two-letter word. We're going to see it. John 3 and 16. Go ahead. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, uh -huh. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. See, now this is a famous verse. And it's just one verse among a whole lot of other verses, so you can't blow it out of, out of uh, proportion. It's a whole lot of other verses around this. But yeah, it does show you the love of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. See, and they, they didn't reduce belief just to a, a simple catchphrase. You just make a statement and that shows you belief. That's not the real belief in the Bible. And they make you think that, you know, they never even tell you the other side of this, the flip side of this, because it did say in this one verse, who, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish. Even that verse is letting you know it's a possibility somebody going to perish, right? But whoever talking about somebody perishing? And that's what the Bible is letting you know. The Lord is trying to tell you, you're going to get your act together like I'm telling you, or you are going to perish. But see, they don't never talk about the perish in even in that verse, do you? How many times you heard somebody focus on perish? You don't hear that. That's what I'm saying. But now, in, and, and more than that, we're just going to read a little further and get a clearer picture because God is only giving you so long to get your act together, to receive this good news. He's merciful. It's mercy that he haven't killed, that he didn't kill all of us in here right now today before we even got a chance to hear the truth. That's mercy in and of itself. But we got to hear the truth and be about the truth before it's too late. So now go ahead. Verse 17. 
For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. See, you, you can you can overstress that. That don't mean the world and people in the world are not going to be condemned in the end because we dealt with two weeks ago. The whole world is deceived. And that and the Bible is pointing that out to you. And the Lord got something for this world in the end. But now when he came the first time, he was trying to do everything he can to save people. Go ahead. But that the world through him might be saved. Go ahead. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not, not is condemned already. Go ahead. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Oh, so now notice. He said, if you believe, you're not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hasn't believed on the name of the son of God. And if you believe on his name, if you believe on him, period, you're going to be obedient to him. And we're going to get to some of that. Because you can't just make it like just call on him or just say you believe or say you got faith. Faith without works don't mean nothing to God. But go ahead. What verse? 19? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world. Uh -huh. And men love darkness rather than light. See, now they don't never read. Why don't you just read a little further? You can get a clear picture. Uh, a little bit of what Paul, you can get a little glimpse of the terror of the Lord right here. Just a little glimpse. Right. Because he's letting you know. That it's going to be some people still that's going to get condemned. God has done everything he can to save you. And when that's all said and done, if you don't listen, you're going to be condemned. That's why the title is Receive the Truth. You got an opportunity. Receive the truth or you're going to get something else. Just like uh, Matthew 3, John the Baptist told them people, he said, you're going to either get baptized with the Holy Ghost, you're going to get the Spirit of God, or you're going to get some fire on your backside. That's what he tell you. So you got the choice is yours, but you're going to get one or the other. Receive the truth or a reprobate mind to be damned. See, God will only deal with you so long, and when you get to that point, God will make sure. He said, you want that? You can have it. You can have it. That's why people in this world are so messed up. They make everything okay. That's why you got all these states ratifying uh, same-sex marriage. They making everything like it's okay. Not in God's eyesight. But go ahead. Because their deeds were evil. Okay, now he said at verse 19, this is condemnation that light is coming to the world. Yeah, light is true. That came into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. See, he's telling you the scenario. Because what? Because their deeds were evil. See, like I said, if you just read a little bit down from that famous verse, you'll get a clear picture of God. People going the wrong way. Their deeds are evil. Why even talk about deeds if it don't matter, right? They tell you, you ain't got to have no deeds. You ain't got to have no works. Sound like you got to have some here. You're calling them evil, right? Go ahead. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. See, the ones that do evil, they hate the light. Go ahead. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. See, they don't even want to come to the light. Because you know if you come to the light, that's why it's hard for people to grab hold to this, what we're dealing with, because you got to make a change. You know, people say, well, you can come as you are. And I say you can come as you are, but soon you better get the change when you get here. That's the only reason I say you can come as you are because somebody, I, people have told me a lot of times, well, I ain't ready yet. I'm not ready. I got to get my act together. You ain't going to get your act together on your own. You got to come to get your act together, but you got to get your act together. So I say, yeah, come as you are, but get to changing in a hurry. See, it ain't like come as you are and that's it. That's the way people try to make it in, in the traditional churches. But now he said, for everyone that doeth evil, at verse 20, hated the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Verse 21. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, uh -huh. that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. See, he working, he working according to God. He that doeth truth. See, you got to get the truth and you got to abide in it. You got to live according to the truth. That's what he means. He that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be manifest that they are wrought in God. So we got a whole lot more information besides John 3.16 just then, didn't we? Mm -hmm. See, we already taught what the average church is going to give you on Sunday. 